Okay, so the next question, what is WordPress? Well, what I've done here is I've pointed my browser to WordPress.org. You can certainly do the same on your side if you want. This is, of course, the home of WordPress online. And I'll just kind of read through this little tag bit here because this is kind of interesting. WordPress is a state-of-the-art publishing platform with a focus on aesthetics, web standards, and usability. I love this line. WordPress is both free and priceless at the same time. So what WordPress is, is it's a blogging application. It's a blogging platform. It was started back in 2003 as an open source software project. Now, do you know about open source? Have you heard about open source? Well, what open source means is it means developers and programmers can extend it and customize it. And as far as the end users like you and I, it's free for us to use and and install on our computers and work with. So here's another example of open source that I'm sure you know about. I'm using the Firefox web browser. I didn't pay for Firefox. I was able to download it for free. And if I were a developer, I could customize it further. I could create what are called add-ons or plugins for the application to extend the capabilities of the software. It's exactly the same with WordPress. And that's why WordPress is so popular, is it's free, it's open source, it's available to everybody. It doesn't matter who you are or where you live. You can work with WordPress. It's fantastic stuff. WordPress itself is powerful. It's easy to use, and as I say, it's fully customizable. Now, that said, there are three different ways to go about using WordPress. One way is to create a free account on WordPress.com. And you can see there's a link for that right here. Get a free blog on WordPress.com so you don't have to spend a dollar to create an online presence using WordPress. It's insane. So you can create a business presence if you want. You can actually sell products online. It wouldn't cost you any money to set that up. Or you could set up a personal opinion blog or maybe a blog for your church organization or a community organization or who the heck knows, right? It's fantastic stuff. So that's one way, setting up your free account on WordPress.com. Another way to work with WordPress is to download the latest version of WordPress. Here it's 2.9.2. I could download that and then install it on an existing hosting account. And that's normally what I do myself. I've got hosting services provided by another company and I simply install WordPress on that account. And then finally, a third way to work, and this is often a method that more experienced developers use, is they install and run WordPress on the their machine, their actual local computer. This is called a local installation of WordPress, and that's something that I do quite a bit as well. So those are your three options. Now, WordPress itself is comprised of a set of PHP files that are assembled on the web server to compile into HTML pages. It's using server-based technologies to serve up the pages of our blog. This HTML, or our pages inside our blog, are all under the control of CSS, cascading style sheets. WordPress doesn't have to be used for blogging, by the way, either. So in other words, a WordPress site doesn't have to be a blog. Now, the appeal of a blog is creating regular posts, setting up this chronological order of posts, which we just talked about a moment ago, and also allowing for the ability for your visitors to comment on your posts, right? So those are the really the big draws for blogging that and the fact that it's so easy and simple to actually set up a blog. However, if you want, you can use WordPress to create a traditional static website with static pages. In other words, no posts, no chronological order of those posts, and no comments. So just static pages by themselves. And later on, I'll show you how to actually go about setting up these static pages, right? So I guess what I'm trying to say is that you can use WordPress as a substitute for traditional HTML editors like Dreamweaver. And again, you don't need to know a lick of code no HTML, no CSS, which is awesome. Now, that said, if you have Dreamweaver, and if you have an understanding and a working knowledge of HTML and CSS, you're going to be ahead of the game, especially if you want to get into customizing your blog, which of course is definitely possible. Last but not least, your WordPress 
Blog can also be used as a content management system or what's referred to as a CMS. So in other words, what you can do is, let's say for example, you're setting up a site for your company and you wanna have other employees in the company also adding content to the blog, but you don't want them to be messing around with the formatting and you wanna be able to control the way that their content gets formatted and displayed online. You can definitely use WordPress to achieve that as well. So as you can see, WordPress is is not only about blogging, there's a lot of different uses for it. So hopefully that all makes sense. So next up what we'll do is we'll see to actually setting up WordPress so that we can actually start to use it.